Well, here we are, another week. It's been a week. It's been a week. We had the week off. You know, we dropped an episode though. Yes. So good to be with you again. I had a lovely retreat, nice and relaxing, nice and prayerful, in minus five oh. degree weather, out in Goulburn, but How very did you relaxing. Hold up? Good. There was a fireplace, so I was comfortable. Lovely. Loved it. And back and into things now. We got a lot to cover in the show. Yes. So we're going to get into it. Straight into it. Let's get into it. Well, let's do it. Firstly, Uno. Uno. <laughs> Uno. We would like to. <laughs> Grazie. I don't know. <laughs> or Gracia. Anyway, we'd like to thank, <laughs> nevertheless, we'd like to thank our sponsors as always for our show. Our sponsor is one. And uh, that's MJ Podiatry. So to remind everyone at home, MJ Podiatry is a mobile home visit network servicing all throughout Sydney. They're an all-around podiatry service, any our general treatments, anything for sport, and there's NDIS and home care packaging offered as well. For any pains, injuries, custom-made orthotics, advice on footwear, whatever you need, I speak from experience, MJ Podiatry has your feet. So... Contact them on 0412389278 or email the team at info at mjpodiatry.com.au. Thank you to MJ Podiatry. And don't forget that ATG10, ATG10, there we go, promo code for 10% off. 10% off. Lovely. Beautiful. Yeah. Did you have a good time off? I did. I've been extremely busy, mm. as I was telling you. I think I was telling you before the show. Mm. Um, my social energy is is currently completely out, but luckily with you, I don't need to use my social energy. I can just I can just relax. You can be. Me. You can be. Yeah. That's a good thing about that. That's Thank God. that's that's <laughs> a that's a healthy relationship. You can just be yourself in front of the other. That's right. Yeah, that's right. You can, and you'll start to realize that you can't always say yes to things. You're gonna um, have to neglect a few social outings, ones that aren't necessarily. Um, too important. You're gonna have to say no every now and then. It's so true. It's so true. <laughs> yeah, I'm starting to realize. Yeah, that. <laughs> because you need to rest, and there's balance, and there's all sorts of things that it'll start to affect. So, oh yeah. Um, thank you. That's all right. That's good. <laughs> and Anthony, of course, our wizard. He never has time off. He's around the clock. I am. <laughs> mm. So we thank you for editing that that episode for us that we dropped during the week. While we were away. My While pleasure. we were having time off. While we were having time <laughs> we off. We gave you more work to do. <laughs> the wizard is on the deadline and the wizard always pulls through. So we're very thankful to the wizard. My pleasure. Thanks. God yeah. bless you, mate. I do it for the people. It's all right. He does it for the people. <laughs> for the people. <laughs> for the beautiful internet people. For the, the beautiful bips. internet. The bips. The bips. <laughs> we do it for the bips. I <laughs> <laughs> oh, love it. Now, let's talk footy. Mm. And we've got the naming of teams. <laughs> <laughs> Just say it. Go ahead. Come on. Give if us your West Tigers tips, where's, Bill. Where's my camera? Oh, there you are. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I noticed that in the naming of this New South Wales team for game two, mm. my man, <laughs> Connor Watson, has been named. A man who, by the way, if we can dream back to a few weeks ago, I was laughed at for picking. And I think Josh Alloway called me out on it too. But it's all good. He's in the team. He was named. <laughs> I mean, look, he didn't call you out on it explicitly, on, on Connor Watson explicitly. I knew what he was. But it was inferring. definitely implied. <laughs> I thought you said Connor implied. Tracy. <laughs> Connor, <laughs> Connor, Connor Tracy. In the second row. <laughs> we, will, we will go back to that footage and you will see me pick him. Well, and you'll see my co-host uncharitably laugh at me <laughs> and others be like, what the heck was that? Well, I'm sorry, his name for game two may not be in the position I picked him, but he's in the team. <laughs> I I'm am, cool. I'm an oracle. <laughs> I'm a tipster. <laughs> They're just, I don't know how many more words. Oh gosh. I'm a, I don't know. I just, that gut feel, that gut feel, had that gut feel and it just came in. Actually, can I ask for that? What's it like being as amazing as you? <laughs> What's Look, it like? I can do. I can do nothing except through the grace of God. So, 
Oh. That's all. That's all. So after that whole, <laughs> that whole spill, <laughs> that whole spill about yourself, now you're just like, well. <laughs> Mate, we must show humility in all things. Mm. That'll be uh, a thing. It sounds like you mm-hmm. want to have your cake and eat it too. That's what it sounds like to me. <laughs> Take the acclaim, but then as a side note. Look, oh, I just want to say, Connor, congratulations. <laughs> I believed in you from day one. And you may be New South Wales saviour. We shall see. <laughs> listen, listen, look, you know what? Speaking of humility, I need to be humble here, okay? I could say that I was laughing at the fact that you put Connor Watson in the second row and that was it. But the reality is, yes, I was laughing at that, but I was just laughing at the choice of Connor Watson in general. And then I heard his name being spoken about in the origin conversation. And I was like, what is going on? It is nuts that he's even being spoken about. No, no disrespect to Connor Watson. I like him. He's a good player. It's just interesting that he was in the origin conversation. Then he gets picked. <laughs> and the first thing I thought of was, oh, great. <laughs> Father Ben's going to give his spill. <laughs> Well, look, if you must know, I haven't been completely truthful with you. Last week, I wasn't away on a retreat. I was with the New South Wales selectors, <laughs> just given having a bit of a chat, leading him through a few things, talking to them about a few guys. And Connor, Connor came up. I bought him up. I bought him up. Lo and behold. <laughs> Lo and behold. Connor chosen. So are you the team chaplain or something? Look, I'm ready. I'm ready. Should they need it? I'm ready. (laughs) That is horrible. Talk to me about our origin teams. Well. What do we got? Well, let's start with Queensland because Queensland's the easier one to talk about just because it's so impressive. But Queensland side really just picks itself each each year, each game. Um, A couple of surprises though. Uh, with so I'm not sure I've heard that Selwyn Cobbo's injured though Billy Slater's comments made it sound like he just dropped him didn't need him for this game um, so he's taken Cobbo out and he's put um, Kurt Capel in, on the bench which if anyone's watched early episodes from this season will know that I think so highly of Kurt Capel you got Capel. tickets on him he's awesome mm. he's awesome I love mm. him um, and then Jermaine Hopgood is injured, so that brings in Felice Kafusi as well. Kafusi, who was 18th man anyway, and he was activated. When He's the, seasoned. Yeah, he is. He's seasoned. Yeah, how good's the hair? Mm. You know, yeah. the backwards fade or whatever. What did the he backwards say? Backwards fade. He said business in the front, party in the back. <laughs> um, terrible haircut. <laughs> anyway, um, but Queensland side just always dangerous. Billy Slater's a top coach. Um. Yeah, interesting. And Kurt Capel's cover. He can play center um, and he can play anywhere in the forward pack. So he's good. He's good. Not much to say about Queensland. They're deadly. And they're going, where are we playing this one? In this Melbourne? Is in Melbourne. In Melbourne. It's so it's a neutral ground, mm. but it's but do or die for New South Wales. Yeah. And and Queensland have a pretty, pretty set formula on yeah. how to play Origin. That's right. A few Melbourne players in there. Mm. Yeah, dangerous, dangerous. Yeah. Okay. I've always found Melbourne's got a deeper connection to Queensland than New South Wales. Yeah. Like, Melbournians don't like Sydney anyway. Yeah. Because Sydney's better. <laughs> uh, but because br- m- most of the Melbourne Storms, or well, the Melbourne Storms feeder club is a Brisbane-based club. Mm. So. Well, it's now North Sydney Bears, funnily enough. Oh, really? But they, I think they have academies and stuff in... I don't know if Academy is the oh, right that's word. that's right. So but NAS was playing for North Sydney. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's just from this year. Yeah. But I think they still have some sort of partnership with the Queensland side as I well. Feel, I'm I, not feel, sure. I feel like it was Weird. like Brisbane East or something like that. Yeah, something. Yeah. But they definitely have like scouting networks, academies, I don't know what you call them, yeah. in a lot of them in Queensland, mm. which explains yeah, mm. their stars. Well, look... Queensland have those two very capable fill-ins. Mm. Those two very capable. <laughs> <laughs> it has begun. The Capewell fill-ins. Ant, you're getting there. Very <laughs> thank good. You, thank very you. Good. We've been training you well. <laughs> yes. <Thank> you. Young <laughs> Padawan. 
<laughs> two very capable <laughs> villains. Yeah. Yeah. They do. They've got them. Yeah. Uh, Will they live up to the hype of Connor Watson? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> but they've chosen who they've chosen. <laughs> well, it remains to be seen. <laughs> mm. um, all right. Well, let's get to the big conversation. We're New South Welshmen. We are. So I think, you know, this is this is open for, open for discussion. I wrote my own sort of um, mini article on Instagram. Check it out. Like, subscribe, <laughs> comment and follow if you want to see Anthony's ins and outs, his proposals, who he thinks should. Someone was telling me uh, you put Jacob Carraz up there. Yeah. I did put him in there. Good. Do a bit of these ones, Ant. Yeah, yeah. Like, subscribe, comment, yeah. and follow. We got to do it. <laughs> Thank you. Follow everyone. <laughs> follow, please. Thank start you. following on YouTube. Subscribe on YouTube. Click that notification bell so you know when we release an episode. You see all of our shorts. You see our videos, and then you've got all of our links to all of our other socials: Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, um, Tumblr, um, Reddit, and all that kind of stuff <laughs> that. Is out there. MySpace. So MySpace. Well MySpace. Yeah, We're nice. recycling jokes yeah. now. So <laughs> <anyway>. <laughs> but um, no, please do. Please continue your support of us and spread the word of what we're doing because we love what we're doing and we know that you guys love it too. You might not always agree, but that's good, healthy dialogue and relationship with us and our mm. listeners and viewers. So please get onto it. Listen to us also on Apple iTunes, on Spotify. What else are we on? Google. Yeah, all the um, podcast services. We're all on, on, over all the podcast services. Yeah. So if you don't, if you're getting tired of looking at this head and that head every week, you can just listen to us mm. if you'd like. Mm. So you're very welcome to do so. But spread the word. We want to get this this product out to as many people as we can. A few good guests coming up in the next month or so as well. So we'll keep you posted. Keen, keen. I cut you off. Continue. No, all good, all good. Well, um, well, yeah, and and. The reason I wrote this article is obviously because it's, you know, it's, it was like an opinion piece. So it was, it's obviously what I think is best. A few of them are in the side, well, a couple. Um, but overall, personally, I'm not very happy with <laughs> the New South Wales side. I don't think this is a team that can go to... No, I lie. I think they can go to Melbourne and win. I don't think they will. Mm. Not at this point. So... I I like Michael Maguire. Still think he's a top coach. Um, simply because of what he did with New Zealand, I know some people aren't convinced by that because of his club footy and things like that. But I'm I was convinced by it. Um, but anyway, here we go. I'll I'm going to tell you what I think if that's okay, and and please feel free to disagree. You're the expert. Go for it. <laughs> Apparently not, Connor Watson. Uh, all right. Look, we all know, we all know that sometimes when I get a feel, I just pull it off. I know, honestly, that's so true. But that's why I don't always have a feel. Mm. Every now and then, it's given to me. Mm-hmm. And I just well, now I know. I know to back you now. Yeah. When you have a feel, yeah. All right. Rather than laugh at me, it's true. I might laugh still. Fair. But I'll back you. Fair. <laughs> How good's Dylan Edwards at fullback? Yeah, love Finally it. Finally gets his go. Love it. Hopefully <laughs> hopefully he doesn't get injured again. Um, I, I really hope so because he really deserves it and he is going to be massive. Edwards is he, – he'll just get New South Wales on the front foot every, almost every set. So he's, he's awesome. He's so smart. There's something weird about the way Dylan Edwards plays in that he's not flashy or anything like that, but – but somehow he slices through the line. Um, he always seems to be in the right place at the right time. Everything. And it's awesome. He doesn't get the credit that like – he gets credit now. So he's he used to be underrated now. We're good. But he doesn't get the type of credit that someone like Reese Walsh gets because Reese Walsh is a lot more flashy and, you know, it's a lot it's a lot prettier to look at. Mm. But Edwards just gets the job done. Do you know if he – you would know um, what he's like with directing the defence from the back? Um, well, that's a good question, actually. I haven't paid too much attention to that. Uh, yeah, I haven't paid too much attention to him necessarily doing that. Um, Panthers' defense is solid, and it's a credit to their whole system that they've got. But 
Edwards would play a massive part in that because the fullback obviously sees everything from behind. So he would play a massive part in that. So that's interesting. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at that because I assume he's going to be picked. Oh, no, he can't because he's in origin. Anyway, in origin, I'll try and pay attention to that. That's awesome. I will look at that. But his positioning is solid always. Um, very, very, very rarely, like extremely rarely, is he out of caught out of position. So, which is good for someone like against someone like Cherry Evans who can kick a forty twenty from <laughs> out of nowhere. Um, the other change I suggested, so that the first was Edwards if if he's fit. The other change I suggested was, and you mentioned it, Jacob Caraz. That the only reason I mentioned Caraz is because I didn't know Bradman Best was back from injury. Um. Uh, he was a surprise pick because I was looking and he was expected to be back like round 16 or 17. And he came back now. So I was like, oh, there's a chance he could get it. And it's not that it's not that Latrell Mitchell is a bad selection. It's just that if I was coach, I wouldn't have picked Latrell. There's something that's been different about his attitude this year, though he's showing that origin worthy attitude over the past couple of weeks he's shown it um so i don't think it's a horrible selection but and everyone's saying you know he he puts fear into queensland and all that stuff really like we don't i mean it's great and it's been necessary over past years but we have that in the forwards now who can put the fear into queensland we just need speed and skill mm. in our backs mm. And Mitchell's got skill. He's got everything, but it's but he's so you don't know what you're going to get from him. So I would have put Bradman best had I known he was in. But Karaz was another option because he's a threat, you know, in the air. His hit ups are crazy. Everything. So that was just my thing. Though I'm not completely against Latrell playing. Um. Then you you go down a little bit. Reese Robson was incredible defensively in game one incredible but his attack and i think i said this on previous episodes his delivery from dummy half isn't great his running game is is good when he does it but he doesn't do it often enough and so queensland's middle is slow so i think i would have started wade egan who i put in my original team and i still and he was injured so he, fair enough but now he's back I back Wade Egan. Um, all right. Mm. Interesting. Okay. I was expecting a few disagreements on that. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. Cool. All right. So I'd put Wade Egan. He'd, he'd be able to expose him a bit more. Better running game, better delivery from dummy half. Now, here's my most um, questionable uh, decision or opinion. Connor Watson. Yeah, no, <laughs> no, even even more than Connor Watson, surprisingly, mm. <laughs> is this this gets people. Just just listen to me. Hear me out before you start linking it at the screen or mm. at your phone or whatever. Okay. <laughs> Angus Crichton was one of New South Wales' best players in game one. And I think he's a great player. But I think Ola Kowatu is a better player. And so I would just not not for not because Angus Crichton did anything wrong necessarily, though his he was outpaced a few times. It was a bit too slow for him. Um but it's just because Olaquatu is better. So I would put Olaquatu in the second row. <laughs> He's dangerous with early ball. He knows how to run solid lines. He's dangerous in the air. He's a solid defender and he's aggressive. And someone like him is someone who can put fear into Queensland. And you need that like in our forward pack. So I would put Ola Kowatu. Mm-hmm. And the decision in game one to have two back rowers on the bench when back rowers play 80 minutes, it was wild to me. It didn't make any sense. And then people are saying Ola Kowatu had a bad game. Well, no, he didn't. He came on, got no ball because... Unfortunately, our halfback <laughs> wasn't great at structuring the play, mm. which is why I also agree I skipped Mitch Moses, but I would have put Mitch Moses as well. Mm. Moses um, in. Moses in, which is great. Um, 
And Olakwatsu tried to be a bit aggressive when he came on, when he could, in defense. So he, he did that. So that's what I would do. Cam Murray and Locke, I'm not against. I'm not against it, but I wouldn't have done it. So I would have started Isaiah Yo on the on uh not on the bench. In lock. He's just the best lock in the game. I don't know why we've got him on the bench. Simple as that. No more <laughs> no more explanation needed on that. Yeah. Um now this is my biggest thing, the bench. Right? The bench was so bad in game one. <laughs> the look on your face. <laughs> the bench was horrible in game one. A change, Not because of the players. A change needed to be made. Th- yes. And it was. <laughs> Plenty of changes. <laughs> now, here's the thing, okay? Connor Watson is an interesting choice, but he's a bit of impact. What a choice. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> I don't, I don't like, whatever, he's there, okay? I would have put Coruscant as 14 because imagine, are you ready? Are you ready? Mm. Just think about this. I want everyone to just think about this. We're playing a game. We're 20, 25 minutes in, into the first half. Queensland middle, Queen, Queensland's middle is the slowest part of their team, though they're reasonably quick too. But they're the slowest part of the team. They start to tire out in the middle. They might bring on some subs or fresh subs, but at the 20, 25 minute mark in a tiring Queensland side, Spencer Lenu comes off the bench with Api Coruscant. And Lenu just takes his massive run makes 10, 15 meters plus another five, 10 post-contact meters gets up, plays the ball quickly and Coruscant's there. Bang. Straight from dummy half. If that doesn't put fear into Queensland, I don't know what will. (laughs) Connor Watson will. (laughs) But you know what? If Connor Watson does it, brilliant, brilliant. But I would have just put Coruscant. But sure, (laughs) Connor Watson. Granted, it's a 20-man squad. There's going to have to be a few cut as well. Yeah, so yeah, that's right. We're not sure at this stage, but I'm just going to ride this wave for as long as I can. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, no, he named the, one to 17. He's in the 17. Oh, wow. Yeah, he played, he played one to 17 in game one. Didn't make any change. So I assume he's going to do the same here. He's 14, Connor Watson. So he's, he's the utility. And he hasn't named anyone else. Like, oh, Cam McInnes is... 20. Is, yeah, 19. Yeah, he's okay. in the 20. <clears throat> Um, so he's another, but whatever. Anyway, so that's interesting. Mm. And then, so he's got Olakwatu, Isaiah Yo, and Lenyu on the bench with Connor Watson. Again, Olakwatu is a back rower. You don't need a back rower on the bench, which is why Angus Cronin would just be completely out of my side, or he'd be in the reserves. But Mitch Barnett deserves a spot in Origin. He's aggressive. He's but his, his aggression doesn't get the best of him. Not anymore. He used to. <laughs> and um, and he's just a solid player. Good hole running, strong defensively. And he can play anywhere in the forward pack except hooker. So he can play front row, back row, lock. He covers all of that. And then, so what I would have is a replacement hooker, impact hooker, two versatile forwards. Because Len, you really, like he only really plays prop. People in our, like Jake Trebojevic can move around and stuff like that. Um, and then my 17 would be, and this baffles me that he's not even in the 20-man squad at all, is Matt Burden. Like, Burden deserves to play Origin. Now, I'm not saying this because I'm a Bulldogs player. Uh, Bulldogs. <laughs> I wish I was a Bulldogs player. <laughs> not just saying this because I'm a Bulldogs supporter. Matt Burden deserves to play Origin more than 80% of this squad. But, and, and he deserves a starting spot the way he's been playing. But he's so versatile that he would just be better on the bench for New South Wales, mm. at least for now, because mm. he, he covers every position in the back. He can play in the halves. He can play center. And Stephen Crichton can move around or whatever, like whoever. Latrell Mitchell can move around. Doesn't matter. Um, and he's not even in the side. Matt Burden, not not even in the twenty man squad. So everyone's saying, "Oh, great for the Bulldogs because Burden now can play for the Bulldogs." Who cares? The guy deserves <laughs> the guy deserves Origin, mm. and New South Wales needs someone of his 
versatility and skill set and caliber in the side. So I would play him 17. Can I just maybe throw something out there? I mean, I was listening to Talkback Radio yesterday and Late Mail and all this sort of stuff, and everyone was saying he was in the 20. And all of a sudden, this it's in the evening, it's Luke Keery's in the 20 and Matt Burton's not in the 20. Interesting. So, and um, like James Hooper, he named the team that was going to be announced and everything was spot on, um, even um, – even Connor Watson. Now, even Cameron <laughs> Murray playing in the 13. Um, wow. Everything was spot on. And then and Burdum is in the 20. This guy's head. Really? Yeah. I might have to zoom the lens out of it to cover Father <laughs> Ben's head. <laughs> Stop it. Stop it. <laughs> but, That's gold. But it makes me think maybe there's something up. Okay, interesting. Yeah. Like maybe, yeah. I don't know. It's Good just to know. It's late mail was everything. Mm. And as a side note, speaking of late mail, Luke Keery just signed with um, Catalans for next year. I thought he was retiring. Yeah. Late mail. There you go. Signed with Catalans. Yeah. That's a big pickup for them. Yep. He's awesome. He deserves to keep playing. Yeah. So maybe what's happened, this is literally just come up in my mind. No one take this as any truth. I have no grounds for this. But maybe what's happened is he's called Matt Burden and said, I've got you 18th man again. And Burden's like, nah. Either put me in the squad or I want to play for the Bulldogs this week. And he's probably just axed him. Can players do that? Latrell Mitchell apparently oh. apparently said in game one, nah, I'd rather just focus on the Rabbitohs when Michael Maguire called him. Hmm. That's speculation. Maybe he's know. told Matt, go just play your game. And if anyone actually goes down in injury, you're the first. We're actually just going to call you in anyway. Mm. Could be the case actually, yeah, as well. Because this would this would have been the fourth or fifth time that he wouldn't be able to play f- for the Bulldogs and he's not even playing Origin. Mm. So. Yeah, that could be the case. Well, look, if know, New South Wales needs a hero. Father Ben, the hero. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, gosh. My man, Connor Watson. Oh, gosh. <laughs> My man. I really hope so. <laughs> I hope this whole, I hope the Blues win. Mm. But it just seems so. We've got a better chance now that Connor Watson's in the squad. Yeah, I'm sure we I'll do. T- I'll tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I would uh, actually, I would agree with that. Mm. Not, not because it's Connor Watson, though, though he's a good player. It's because there's someone to bring Reese Robson off because mm. he can't be playing 80 minutes. He's been great at. Hooker. He's been great for the Roosters. Connor Watson? Yeah. Yeah, he's always been a great impact player. And even starting this year, a lot of the time. He yeah. started in the halves one game and well, did didn't really he play well. all 80 on the weekend? He was pretty good. Yeah, in the actually, nine. And actually speaking of this weekend or last weekend now, um, did you write this article before watching Angus Crichton play on the weekend? Yeah, he killed it. Because he was amazing. But he's always been, he's he's been killing it this year in general. So it doesn't necessarily change because I'm thinking he may have read your article and wanted to respond to it and got oh yeah that's what I reckon that'd be an honor firstly yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um but no it's like it, it's I I I don't doubt that Angus Crichton's a great player mm. like and like I said he was one of our best in game one he was probably second best to Zach Lomax like the way he played was crazy mm. but I just think Olakwatsu's a Better player, and there's no room for him. I think Ola Kawatu will be playing Origins for years to come. Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. And if he if he's just on the on the edge at this stage, just on the fringe of cracking a starting spot and being the first choice, mm. this just might be one of those years where he's come off the bench and yeah. that's the way it is. Oh, well, it's annoying because yeah. we want the Blues to win. We do. Because <laughs> see, this is the thing. It's like. I feel as though we chase a series victory each and every year based on a team that is just chosen for the moment. Mm. Whereas Queensland have this structure, this spirit, this mentality about them where they've had guys coming through the system and that when, when it's origin time, they just play and they dominate. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, so the people have debated what the benefit is of the chopping and the changing all the time. And New South Wales seem to be doing just a lot of that. Yeah. Just chopping and changing. How can you have any cohesion and flow? And so it's tough. Yeah. This is this is still very much the aftermath of that Queensland domination era. You know, it really is. If we look at um, like Ben Hunt, I remember I was watching on the weekend, Andrew Johns was talking about the Origin teams. And he goes, oh, Ben Hunt, surely he's in the mid-20s now for Origin appearances. And I was like, oh, I was curious. I actually looked it up and he's played 18. He hasn't even hit 20 yet. But he feels like he's been p- part of it for so yeah, long. Yeah. You know, and the Queensland have a lot of those players where we have all this interchange stuff. But I don't think we ever had a chance to just establish anything because we're still all of that aftermath of that domination. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it's a while ago now, but still, you still feel it. Yeah, if my memory it's, serves me correctly, it was a bulldogs harvest combination yeah. <laughs> that got New South Wales out of that uh, out of that big slump. Yeah, that's right. The uh, the like one of the most random selections. They weren't even in the was conversation it, in media. It was least. Josh Reynolds and Trent Hodkinson. And Hodkinson, yeah, that's right. Hodkinson's <clears throat> sorry, excuse me. Hodkinson's one of the easily one of the most underrated halfbacks. In recent times, mm. um, we have a clear one in Nathan Cleary mm. if he's fit. So that's not really up for debate. The the five eighth position is more up for debate, and you could argue that Luai looked great in game one, probably because he was our our only good half. <laughs> um, so he probably looked great compared to Nico Hines, but he even looked- then he had some defensive. I think the um, the talk about him being halfback for New South Wales is insane. Luai? Yeah. It's really insane because yeah. you'd see he would dance around yeah, and then the players around him don't know what to do. That's not the job of a halfback. Yeah, yeah, that's right. You know, eyes up footy, you, that's great, but not for a halfback. Yeah. and But to his credit, he was really the only one um, anticipating Queensland's defensive moves. So like, yeah, I don't diss game, what he would, what he was doing. He was great, but, but I don't think that's halfback. the role of a halfback. Yeah, but it's because our halfback was was non-existent. Yeah. So all we had was a five eight dancing around, because literally, like if you watch it back, Nico Hines is just standing watching, um, watching players take hit ups, mm. instead of, like going and structuring the plays to come, in that set. It was a bit weird. Anyway, I don't want to bag too much, and I feel sorry for him, but. It just wasn't an origin halfback performance. So, um, But the thing is, just to finish up on this whole thing, is for, for New South Wales, for many years, they, they've been sort of on the defensive end. So it's like Queensland have had the strike power and what New South Wales had to do and haven't been able to do is... Um, counter what Queensland is going to throw at them so it's like I don't know I don't know too many boxes and things but it's like if if you're boxing (laughs) and one person's got you know the reach advantage and the experience and whatever then your game plan isn't to go in and just attack straight away it's like counter his blows you know watch this like watch his arm swing and then counter it and and hit him or whatever you know that's what New South Wales need to do with Queensland. They have, they're the ones that have the strike power. They have the speed. They have the skill. They have the experience. They have everything. Mm. So New South Wales need to firstly counter what Queensland has. Like in the side that they pick, they need to counter what Queensland throws at them. And then they need to also pick the right players to, to counter back, like to, to attack back. And... That's that's why, like I've mentioned, the speed of Queensland so much is you need a quick you need quick outside backs, which is why Bradman Best I think is a better selection than Latrell. Um, uh, Brian Toto showed speed in game one that I didn't know he had, which was cool. So don't mind him being there anymore. Um, but then in the forward pack, like they have Jeremiah Nanai, who's who's just crazy. He's crazy in everything. His whole running, his his. Like everything I said for Olukwatu, Nanai has as well. Um, so you need someone to counter that, like opposite him. 
you know? And then that's what I mean. Like the hooker, you have Ben Hunt, Ben Hunt, like hard to counter him, but you need someone there who can offer. Yeah. Anyway, there we go. The look on the face. I knew it's coming. Connor Watson will. <laughs> <laughs> Connor Watson is the man to. <laughs> All roads to lead ben to Hunt. Connor Watson. Yeah. <laughs> But anyway, but that's the, that's the thing is like, that's what we've been missing is that New South Wales needs to accept that uh, Queensland is the attacking team. They're the one with the attacking advantage, mm. right? They're going to come full guns blazing. And what we need to do is prepare to counter that first and then um, and then go at them. Well, time will tell. Yeah. Wednesday, next Wednesday. Mm. Mm-hmm. Be good. We'll have a uh, we'll, we'll do our tips next week. That's what it. We think that's it. So we'll see. Now we've got a is it a, another shortened round of NRL games this weekend as well? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. So, so um, are you comfortable to move on to that? Oh yeah. How many teams have the bye? Seven teams have the bye. Wow. So Seven we're, have we're short bye. three games. Okay. This round. Talk to us. All right. Here we go. So we have first game on Friday night is the Dolphins versus the Sharks. And that's in that's at Suncorp in Brisbane. Mm. Dolphins versus Sharks. Uh, did I say Sharks? Dolphins versus Storm. Yes. Why you did, did say, say sharks. sharks. Sorry. Dolphins versus Storm. Dolphins in versus Storm in Brisbane. <laughs> Interesting one. Resting players, maybe. Will they back well, up? Stor- Storm will back up. No, this is before Origin. So, oh, that's this weekend. Yeah, oh, this sorry. Weekend. So, yes, yeah, yeah, of yeah. course. So they won't have. Where's my head at? Yeah. <laughs> it's all about Connor Watson. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh, I'm gonna pick Melbourne. 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 Are there, are there many Melbourne players in the Origin team? Three for Queensland. Coates. Um, yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah. For you, I'm sorry. gonna go Melbourne. Coates. Well. Oh no, Trent Loyero, but he's number twenty. So he's... Yeah, so he'll go back. Yeah, he'll play for them. I don't even know who that is. Ah, well, Trent Lear. I think he's been playing lock most most of the year. That he was benched before, pretty sure. Uh, who else is... Oh, Harry Grant. Still goes tall. Mm. Dolphins are missing... Tabuai Fido. Kafusi. Kafusi. And then the usual Flegler is already out. Yeah, Flegler's already out. Yeah. 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 Melbourne. 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 Uh, I'm going to go Dolphins. Mm. 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 We'll see. Oh, Jerome Hughes is there. Oh, well. I don't know. Let's just go Dolphins. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> um, now we move to Saturday. So Saturday is still a triple header. First game is Titans Warriors in the Gold Coast. But Titans are without Mo Fodawaker. Yeah, that's it. Mm-hmm. Titans. Oh, actually, Warriors are without Mitch Barnett because he's 18th man. Mm. I like the Warriors. We can go Warriors. Warriors. Yeah, Warriors look back to. Or close to their best. I think it's because they're fully fit. I think they were playing injured before. So, backing Warriors. Though I like Titans. They're impressive. All right, here we go. Here we go, gents. At Industry Group Stadium in Gosford. Gosford. The Sydney Roosters versus the Canterbury Banks down Bulldogs. Go the dogs. I'm a convert. I'm tipping the dogs. Wow. I I was going to tip the Roosters, but as soon as Connor Watson got named... (laughs) In the Origin team, I just thought, you know what? There's, I didn't want to say it. There, there goes it. all their strike, all the talent is now out of the team. <laughs> yes. They've got no chance, so chance. I'm going to go with the Bulldogs. Blonskis. Yeah. And I think Matt Burden's got a point to prove. I, I really hope so. Um, but I'm going to go Roosters. Yeah, because they have Tedesco, they have Kiri, they have Walker. You could also know. argue that Connor Watson's brilliance is so profound that even though he's not there, it'll still be just lingering. 
And so it could be enough. I didn't want to say it. But <laughs> didn't want to say it. Yeah. You guys are like, so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, Connor Watson. I, I, I didn't even have the energy to laugh at that selection anymore because I was, I was just thinking about Father Ben's head. <laughs> um, but yeah. Oh, but exciting news for the Bulldogs is, well, for a Bulldog and hopefully for the Bulldogs, is Jarrell Skelton is likely to to come into the side because Adokar's injured. So Wilson's already taken that spot and Stephen Crichton's out for origin. Um, I don't know if you've seen much of Skelton in New South Wales Cup. He played a couple of games last year in first grade. He is a strong, strong player. Strong ball runner. And he's strong defensively. Natural position is wing. Yeah, he came from Union. Yeah, it was a, it was in the Australian Rugby Sevens, like he played for Australia. Yeah, great player. He's he's a winger. I've seen him play centre sometimes, but he'll likely come on the wing and Karaz will probably move to centre, which is uh, you know, could have been playing in the light blue <laughs> jersey mm-hmm. in centre. But uh, anyway. Okay, there you yeah. go. So go the dogs. Go the dogs. But I'm picking roosters. But I'm picking roosters. <laughs> yeah. Is that, is that <laughs> the last the game dogs. for Saturday? No, that's the second game. Yeah. The third one is an interesting one. It's the Rabbitohs versus the Sea Eagles. And De- I think... Depleted teams. Yeah. Yeah. But... Um, well, Rabbitohs are on a high, but how long that lasts, I'm not sure. Well, Rabbitohs, Rabbitohs will still have Cody Latrell. Walker. They'll still have Whiten. For me, that's enough. And so I'm jumping in saying Rabbitohs. How well, good is... The widen change. Widen in the halves. Yeah. Yeah, you called it. He's been called great. Yeah, yeah. I like Rabbitohs. They're on the up. Mm. Um, Connor, what's on your mind? Oh, Anthony? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to say it. <laughs> <laughs> um, Seagulls, who do they have out? They've just got Olakwatu out, no? Cherry Evans. Cherry Evans. Oh, and Jake Trebojevic and Cherry. Oh, crap. Oh, and actually, man. isn't Josh Alloway still suspended? No, I think he's back. Didn't he get two? Yeah. Hasn't oh, so he served two his two-week? Okay. Okay. This guy is dead Oh, no, he set. hasn't, I don't think. Trailblazer. <laughs> trailblazer. What this guy is doing to the game of NRL, <laughs> he's a trailblazer. Josh. 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 You know he'd be a big fan of what Josh did the other week? MJ Podiatry. Ah, yeah. yes. that's a great point. That's Indeed. a great point. And I, I am sure MJ Podiatry would have got a call <laughs> following that incident, yeah. which we don't want to spoil anything. Mm. So mm. Let's, let's quickly move on from Josh Alloy, but I'm sure we'll be back. Okay. Um, so then in that case, I'm going to go Rabbitohs as well. Mm-hmm. But they're without Latrell. Big loss. Mm. Anyway. Rabbitohs. Okay. <laughs> um, that, yeah, that wraps up Saturday. And then we have the one Sunday game, which is the West Tigers versus Canberra Raiders. Tigers coming off a win. Yeah, big win. Aiden Caesar's back. Caesar's back. Big, big difference. And the Raiders, they really fell apart, didn't they, last week? Yeah, but I think... Uh, Ricky will have them up. I think so. Whose home game is it? Tigers. It's at Campbelltown Stadium. At Campbelltown. I think they've lost both games at Campbelltown. Mm. I sold out both of them. <laughs> Look, that home ground advantage helps most teams, but it doesn't help the Tigers, does it? No, I don't think so. <laughs> Raiders for me. Raiders, yeah. Yeah, I'm going to go Raiders too. Mm. Okay. Are they missing any players? Hudson Young's not in the New South Wales side anymore. He'll go. He'll go back into the team. So he's, yeah, back in Raiders. Yeah. Doesn't look like they're missing anyone else. Yeah, Raiders. <clears throat> All right, lovely. Just making sure I don't see any Raiders players here. And I do not. All right. Well. That's the round. That's the round. Good that, tips. And that's Origin. That's Origin, yeah. Um, we'll tip closer to Origin, I think, because mm. we'll have a, a better... Better idea of who's in, who's out, in case there are any injuries and things. The women's decider is this week, isn't it? Or is it next yeah, week? Yeah, is that this week? Is it this week? The women's decider? Oh, the, it's on, it's this Thursday, isn't Thursday it? Thursday night game, I think it is. With the under-19s game. 
If any if any Bulldogs fans are watching the under 19s Origin game, keep an eye on Mitchell Woods. Mitch mm. Woods, fighting yeah. halfback. Yeah, is is he is he still in fourteen though? Oh, is he fourteen? I think he was named in fourteen. Oh, okay. The article I read made it sound like it was. He was playing seven. I don't know. Mm. I'm pretty sure I saw him. If, anyway, either way, wherever he's playing, Mitchell Woods is a is he's played halfback for the Bulldogs. Uh, flag or SG Ball. SG Ball, I think, this year. Anyway, the younger grades <laughs> for the Bulldogs, and he is he's a great player. So keep an eye out. Yeah, the uh-huh. Swans were trying to sign him as well. I didn't know that. Yeah. The who? Well, there you go. Sydney Swans. He could have gone either way. Wow. Hmm. Sydney Swans. That's really random. I'm glad he chose the blue and white over the red and white. Mm. Agreed. Mm. Do you know there's a guy playing for... In the 19s, I think for Queensland, he plays for the Roosters. His name is De La Salle. De La Salle, De La Salle. Bar or something like that. De La Salle Bankstown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, his surname is Bankstown. It's just La Salle now. <laughs> um, yeah. Wow. It's really interesting. There you go. Beautiful name. Anyway, just a side Beautiful thing. Beautiful name. And that's, uh, that's the footy. That's the footy. Well done. Another week. Bit of origin talk. Mm. Origin hype. Mm-hmm. Some surprise selections, some not so surprise selections. Mm. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll reconvene at a later time. Everyone knows what's going on in your head. It's true. <laughs> it's true. It's now time for Father Ben's big hit of the week. <laughs> Trip edition. <laughs> so love it. As always, our big hit segment. Uh, is brought to you by Totus Tours Clothing. So please check them out, Totus Tours. Uh, don't just evangelize through your words and actions, but through your clothing as well. So, Father Ben, mm. I thought, actually it wasn't my thought. It was a Catholic wizard's thought. The Catholic wizard is a brilliant mind. And he came up with this idea that I give you a special edition of the big hit. It's it's with a with an ATG favorite, mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. Um, it's illegal. Mm. He got suspended for it. Mm. Nonetheless, it's, it's a great hit. Mm. All right, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. Oh, Manly against Penrith. Look at this breakaway. Look at the background. Oh, Josh. <laughs> Josh Alloy, big trip. <laughs> Let's have a look at this just quickly. Look at Josh just motoring away. Boop. <laughs> now look, legalize the trip. Hashtag legalize the trip. It is. He's a big guy. He's running. He's motoring as best he can. He's being. He's being burnt by an opposition player. <laughs> just little little love tap tripped over josh very very innovative we want to help that play become legal yeah it really helps it really helps that we know that we know josh like we've met mm, josh mm. we know how nice it, like a guy he is he's such a genuine kind-hearted person and on the footy field you know, sometimes he can be a little bit of a... Maybe he was just cramping up as he was running. He's just, <laughs> That's what I reckon. His leg just like, went... <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? I reckon it the guy was it. saying, um, you got a leg tattoo. And he's like, no, I don't. Look. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Was, we love Josh. He's, that's yeah, not, not subtle at all. Yeah. And that, that's what's brilliant about it. Yeah. It's not like the, someone sidestepped him and he just stuck a leg out or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> on fire joshua well done it's playground bullying is what that was i love so it we used to walk up the stairs at school and then you just yell ankle tap and then and just like you literally tap the person's ankle and they collide with their other leg and they just yeah anyway, not not as funny when you explain it really because seems was, kind of slack but that was just fun back in the day yeah and now it's the boys, the boys You're suspended just, for yeah. a week for doing something yeah. like that. Anyway, <laughs> two weeks for Josh Alloy. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny that 
<laughs> he gets two weeks for that. And um, Josh Suali'i got four weeks for like, almost yeah. like cleaning out. <laughs> <laughs> Leveling race. Walsh for like forever. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, that was a, that was a fun big hit slash trip edition. Hmm. I like that. Very good. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. And uh, there were some other like real big hit contenders, mm. but that, that was brilliant. That was fun. That's, <laughs> that's a nice little uh, change up from what we usually do. Yeah. It's nice. Because the alternative would have been Origin Edition, Suali'i on Walsh. <laughs> <laughs> that was a nice hit. Oh. No, <laughs> no, you never like to see someone go down. Launched himself. Hey, Ant, actually, can, had Liam Martin. Can you imagine if Connor Watson does a big hit <laughs> during Origin? Oh. My gosh, we're gonna our WhatsApp's gonna be going nuts. For yeah, the event. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure to pull my yeah. phone straight out. Yeah. Watch yeah. this space. Yeah. <laughs> if it happens, we'll do a, you do a screenshot and post it on our socials. I love it. I love <laughs> we'll do. Yeah. We'll do. We it. want a reaction reaction video from you when yeah. it happens. Yeah. yeah, when he runs on the field. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll do yeah, a reaction do video. All right, awesome. <laughs> I love it. All right, big trip, big trip of the week. Thanks to Totus to us. So we appreciate their help and their support. What are we doing now? Oh, Father Louis Barricat's calling me. We're filming mm-hmm. Father and you'll know that when you watch this show. Answer. No, no, no. I don't want to put you him on the spot. You made me answer my mum. It's your mother. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what if Connor Watson was calling you now? Would you answer I'll that? take the call for sure. Oh, okay. The there you go, Father Louis, if you're listening. <laughs> see the priority list there? No, because it's Years relevant. of friendship down the drain. It's, re- <laughs> it's, it's relevant to the show. <laughs> if we have a footy player phone in, you never know it's relevant to the Louis show. Maybe Father Louis is calling to say, well done on your Connor Watson selection. Maybe. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe um, Father Louis was with Connor Watson. Could have been. <laughs> That would have been a big burn. That would have been a big burn. Thanks, Father Louis. (laughs) (laughs) We are going to change gears. Oh, yeah. And it's an important (laughs) one to change gears to because we had a beautiful gospel over the weekend, Jesus describing what the kingdom of heaven can be like or what it is like. Um, And the theme of the weekend was ultimately... God loves working with little things. He loves working with our littleness. A person that has pride, a person that has ego, that is arrogant, that thinks they know everything, that ultimately speaks and acts as though they don't need God in their life, well, that person God can't work with. And so I spoke about this quite a bit in my homily, And Jesus compares the kingdom of heaven to the mustard seed. The smallest of all seeds, and when planted, grows into, contrary to what people think, not a big majestic tree, but the greatest of all shrubs. That's the word that Jesus uses there. If you've ever seen a mustard tree before, they're not the most impressive looking things in the world. They don't necessarily grow up. Um... At their peak, you might get 20, 30 feet, but they grow out. So a mustard tree actually grows out, it spreads. And that's what the kingdom of God can be compared to, something that starts off very small and in time matures and spreads. And that's what our early Christians did. They took their time. They were little, they were humble, and they allowed the spirit to work through them. And that's how the kingdom of God actually spread in the world. So in light of that particular gospel, I've now that I live in the city, I'm exposed to quite a bit. And I thought I would, as a Catholic priest, take a bit of a stand and encourage our viewers and listeners to really embrace this theme of humility. And what better time to do it than in the month of June where pride seems to rule everything this month. Let's flip the script. And so June is the month of humility. Okay? And what I would like to encourage people to do through ATG, (coughs) excuse me, through ATG, I'd like people to change for a moment, if you can, your mobile phone, 
screensavers or any of your social media um, pages, change your profile pictures to the most sacred heart of Jesus or the Immaculate Heart of Mary. And just sit with that for a month. For this month of June, hashtag humility and let that be the remedy to the distortions of this world. And when I say distortions, I mean the false narrative that Satan puts in each and every one of our minds who tells us that we are defined by only one part of ourselves. Okay. Now, the reason I bring this up is because we need to continue talking about these things, not so that we sound like a broken record, but because if we don't, then the other side becomes commonplace in our society. And to a degree, it already really has become commonplace. So if you're a person who struggles with anything, a dose of humility can help all of us out. So I want us to hashtag humility and I want us to change our social media profile pictures to not be of ourselves but to be of the sacred heart of Jesus or the immaculate heart of Mary for the month of June, for the remaining month of June. And you will start to see that if you look to these two hearts, they will help you look at your own heart and you might even start to make changes in your own life. And so what might be some examples of these changes? Let's hazard a guess here and think about a few things. Maybe you don't have to be right all the time. Or maybe you don't have to have the last say all the time. Maybe you can die to your own ego a little bit more. Um, Maybe you can choose to not be the loudest person in the room or the most correct person in the room. Maybe you can speak less and listen more. So all of these things I'm encouraging people to do in this month of June and then even for the remainder of the year and maybe just make it part of your life. But I think we really need to start a movement. It's not Pride Month. It's a month of humility and it's 12 months a year, all year round for the rest of your lives. God's eye is drawn to the broken, to the humble, and to the contrite heart. Not to the proud heart, but to the broken, the humble, and the contrite. So that's my challenge and my plea to all of our listeners, our followers. Change everything. Hashtag humility and change your profile pictures to the sacred heart of Jesus or the immaculate heart of Mary. Do it on socials. Do it on your phone. Don't let it be about you or your boyfriend, or your girlfriend, let it be, or your husband, or your wife even, or your children, make God the center, and from that, everything will flow. So that's going to get a few feathers ruffled. Mm. What do you think about Mm. that? I love it. I love it. So just to clarify um, for for our social media users, um, to, like you said, change the profile pictures, change our screensavers, but um, in hashtagging, just post a story on your own, Instagram, Facebook, or whatever, hashtag humility, and then tag against the grain podcast. And, um, and like father Ben said, let's, let's start a movement. Let's start a movement. Let's do it. And we don't really care how it's done. We'd like to see the movement start, Mm. but if you just do that over all your platforms, please do, please do. Yes. Cause you're going to be pressured to do so much in this month if you haven't been already, but change it up. Let's change it. Hashtag humility. Love it. That was a simple message from me this week, really. That's all I want to talk about. Awesome. (laughs) That's great. Well, then I have a question. Yes. Okay. On humility, Mm. uh, specifically on false humility. So um, I'm the type of awkward person (laughs) that when someone compliments me, my automatic response is to uh, to go, no, 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 like, no, I'm not, or whatever. Or, or they'll be like, are you good at this? And I'll be like, no, no, like, I'm not. Um, so my question is, how do we change those everyday sorts of 
those everyday examples of false humility where we sort of reject a compliment or or say that we're not good at these things thinking that it's in humility um but in that kind of being a bit dishonest (laughs) it's a great question i think that maybe at the heart of that might be a little bit of fear as i don't really want to go to this effort of being vulnerable by giving of myself um just in case I look bad or or someone asks me to do something even more than what I'm comfortable doing. So sometimes that can be the case. If you have a great gift that God has given you, then your responsibility is to work with that gift and produce more. And as we read in the scriptures, it's not to fear God. There's that word again, fear and bury it away to save it and then when it comes time you show god look what you gave me i've given back to you god doesn't want that that's not the way we glorify god the way we glorify god is by producing fruits with what he gives us remember we're the mustard seed so as the mustard seed we need to die to the fear die to the pride when we die we produce fruit Look at what came out of Jesus on the cross, dying for our sins. He died, blood and water, the birth of the church. And look at how that has spread. But that could only happen through his death. And so it's important for us to, okay, pick and choose our times, our moments, but never to bury what God has gifted us. We must always press forward and say, God, okay, Help me glorify your name. Help me glorify you in this act of service I'm doing now. Or if what I'm doing is garnering attention and I'm growing in popularity or people are patting me on the back and that's not necessarily what I wanted, then help me know that, God, this was about glorifying you. It's not about me. It's about glorifying you. And that's a great thing to do. I like that. Mm. There's a lot to digest there. Mm. I'm going to go back and watch. <laughs> yeah. Listen to that answer a few yeah. times. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, that's awesome. Okay. And um, it just a sort of sort of a, th- a thought, I guess. Um, just thinking about true humility and I, I always just automatically when I hear Humility, think of Our Lady and Our Lady's response at, um, at the Annunciation mm-hmm. when the angel tells her, <laughs> obviously, that she's going <laughs> to um, be pregnant with God, essentially. Yep. <laughs> and um, I think I've said this on the podcast before, but it's so, it's so interesting because she questions it at first, which is, which is okay. And then she says yes, which is incredible. <laughs> And then she doesn't go around and just go, like, look at me, look at me. <laughs> I was chosen. I'm carrying God. Mm. It, her response was, I'm the handmaid of the Lord. Of the Lord. Um, and so I think that's just off the back of what you said is, like, yeah, th- this I was given this gift, but it's not, it's not for me to be glorified but for God to be glorified. Spot on. So, yeah. Spot on. I think I'm just sort of sharing what's in my head at the moment to see if that's okay. (laughs) Of course it is. You're spot on. And God chose Mary for a reason. She's humble. That's the reason he chose her. That she is the model of humility. The Lord looks on me in my lowliness. She admitted it. And we know that that's what the Lord looks at, our humility, our littleness, so much so that he can produce fruit through our littleness. So in Mary's example, she magnified the Lord so much that she literally became pregnant with God. There was no room for her that she became pregnant with God. Wow. And so 
you and I are called to that each and every day by our manner of life. How how low can you go? <laughs> it's like <laughs> how how low can we go? Not by bashing ourselves, but how little can we become so that God shines through us, so that we become literally pregnant, being other Christs in the world. Wow. So that's what we're called to each and every day. But Mary's a great example of that humility. Wow. Mm. Well, there are so many things that just came up in my head now. Go, shoot. Oh, well, the, well, the first is just the the um, St. John the Baptist saying, I must decrease, he must increase. Yep. Um, but the... the sort of main thing that came up in my head as you were saying that was if we're able to accept the, the reality that God, um, of what God said to St. Catherine of Siena, I believe, when effectively, I might get the exact quote wrong, but he says, I am that which is and you are that which is not. Yes. And he's basically saying, I'm God. You're not. Yes. <laughs> God is God and I am not. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, God is God and I am not. Mm. And that's that's like the the foundation of that's the foundation of humility in our in our life. Spot on. Is that that understanding that God is God and I'm not. Mm. And if I may, it might uh, if I start to maybe rant a little bit, please please stop me because it <laughs> I might open a can of worms with this. Yeah. But um, I was at Mass uh, for a Holy Communion on Sunday. And I'll be honest, I was extremely frustrated during Mass. Um, just because there's so much that happens where, where I go, like, it's Mass. There's a way we do it. 99% of Mass is Scripture. Um. And the one percent that's not scripture is has been like passed down from the early church and from the wisdom of our church fathers and and the magisterium and and it just bugs me <laughs> when people so like there were announcements happening not announcements but like I think I I can only assume it was a teacher or a principal or someone who was getting up during mass and saying, okay, now it's time for this person and this person and this person to read. Um, please come up, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, no need for that. And then um, also, and like, I don't want to sound like I'm bashing or anything, but when a priest adds or changes words in the mass, I'm like, my initial thought was, my initial thought was, um, this might be wrong. I apologize if it is, but my initial thought was, uh, do you kind of think you're better than scripture <laughs> to change the words of scripture? Like to, do you think you're better than, than God or, you know, the, the inspiration of the Holy spirit that, that you're changing the words of scripture in mass. And then, or when they remove the gender from the scripture. Yeah. They, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Mm. I, I didn't know that was a, th- that was, was a, a thing until thing, recently. A big thing through the 70s and 80s. Yeah. Had a lot of abuses there with the lectionary. Um, and look, ultimately, it's a fundamental lack of understanding of what the Mass is. So I think one of the mistakes we make is, firstly, the priest is in charge of the liturgy. No one else. Mm-hmm. And I'm not saying that to be arrogant. Mm-hmm. The, the priest is the um, should safeguard the liturgy the way the ch- church has given it to us. When the priest doesn't do that, you open yourself up for all sorts of um, uh, you know changes and variations and all sorts of things. And this sadly has become the case when it comes to sacramental season in the church. Mm. okay? So what we ultimately have, is a group of unchurched, uncatechized people who don't go to church thinking, okay, this is a one time a year, we have to put it on for those who are coming. We've got to make it more interesting for those who are coming. So that all needs to be scrapped from the outset. That needs to be scrapped because you're ultimately saying that the mass is not good enough for the people that are coming. Yeah. That the liturgy does not provide us enough 
or for us enough for the people to be engaged, okay? So people that don't come to Mass, you don't get to read. I'm sorry. I'm having my regular Sunday readers read at this Mass, okay? You want student participation? Okay, maybe prayers of the faithful if there is, or you can have them bring up the offertory procession. But see, even the mindset is because they're here, they must participate. They must have a role. Mm. Now, that's wrong. That's not for active conscious participation in the Mass the way that Vatican II asked for it. No, for active conscious. You want to participate? Stand in the pews and respond when the priest says, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Say the creed out aloud. Respond at the end of the readings. Yeah. When the priest says the body of Christ, you respond, Amen. Like that's what the participation is all about. But you can multiply these examples all over Sydney. Yeah, yeah. So we're not bashing any particular parish. Oh, no. This happens all <laughs> over Sydney all the time and around the world. Real shame, real shame. Lack of humility. Yes. Real lack of humility. And this is what we need to do and continue to do with adults who don't go to Mass. Yeah. We do not, and I'm sorry, I say this with the utmost respect, we do not cater to those who don't come to Mass. The Mass is not a place where we catechize people. That's not what Mass is. Okay? Yeah. We don't cater to first, second, third time visitors. Okay? I would even go as far as to say, if you're not going to Mass, if faith has no part of your life, then you really need to do some soul searching as to why you want your children to have their first Holy Communion if that's the only time they're going to receive Jesus. Okay? It was a different story with baptism. Baptism is way different story. Okay? We want to baptize our children. And yes, with all my heart, I want them to have the sacraments. But if you as a parent are not going to play your role in adhering to your baptismal promises that you made on behalf of your babies when they were baptized, by bringing them to Mass, introducing them to a relationship with God, by helping them grow in love for God so that they actually desire the sacraments, if you're not going to do that, then why are you there? Yeah. Why are you there? And that's why adult faith formation is so important, yeah. ongoing, to build that up in them again. Yeah. So I, I hear you, man. It's, it's frustrating. Yeah. We need, we need to take a stronger stance on the way things happen in the church, yeah. especially when it comes to the schools and their participation in the sacraments. We need to take a stronger stance there. It needs to stop becoming a show. It needs yes. to stop becoming a catechetical moment for people. Mm. Okay, You can win people over more with the beauty of the Mass more than you can a teacher or a principal basically being an MC and announcing what is happening next. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So that's, yeah, anyway. Yeah, but the, yeah and, <laughs> and the reason I brought that example up is is because of what we were mentioning about humility is these people say, and I heard it outside, and it's that, um, oh, well, you know, we want to be more like welcoming of the people and more inclusive of the people you know, that are coming to mass and we want to include everyone. And um, and I'm thinking like, you're not God. <laughs> like yeah. the mass is, so God asked us to worship him a certain way. Correct. And so this comes back to the humility, the fu fundamental basis of humility that is God is God and I am not, mm. is you don't have a right to change that. God Correct. asked to be worshipped a certain way and we should just be worshipping him that way yeah and um and like it anyway I, I can go on a rant but the, the the thing about worship is that it demands sacrifice correct and so god isn't worshiping us mm -hmm. he's not sacrificing for us though he does sacrifice himself for us to offer up to him which is what an act of love um but, yeah, it's like we're, we're sacrificing for him. So He humbled himself to the point that he didn't count his equality with God 
a thing to be grasped. He became a human, a slave, and died an excruciating death, a death on the cross. Mm. That is a definition of humility. So our God gives us the example. Okay. It also speaks to the fact that people that don't oftentimes go to church or don't have a real understanding of what the Mass is, that they themselves approach the Mass like they would a class or a lesson mm. um, or like they would a business structure or um, the way it might be at the under-8s on a Saturday morning playing soccer or footy where everyone has to have a go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, everyone can have a go in mass. It's called worship. It's called active participation from the pews. Yes. Now, if you're not satisfied with that, then you've got to check your mentality and ask yourself, do I really understand what's going on here? And I think it's up to us as priests to safeguard the liturgy and to have some uncomfortable conversations sometimes with people who mean well. I have no doubt that these people meant well, yeah. but they really need to be catechized and brought on a journey and said, I'm sorry, this is not what we do in Mass. We don't do that in Mass. And I'm not going to do it these two, three, four times a year when people who don't go to Mass come here. We'll have our Mass the way we have it every Sunday. We're not going to do anything extra because why should I do something extra when next week it's going to go back to the way it's always been? Yeah. So why do you have to think... You've got to add something, make something even more grand and spectacular. Why do you have to do that when that isn't the regular Mass goers experience? Mm. And if we want our children to get used to going to Mass, consistency yes. and repetition is the way we do it. Yeah. And so it is up to priests to safeguard liturgy and it's up to them to have difficult conversations with people who want to abuse liturgy. Maybe they're not doing it you know, with ill will, but they just think, oh, it'd be nicer if we did this. That's fine. That's coming from a place of ignorance. They don't know the liturgy. They don't understand it, okay? So we've got to really put the foot down and say, I'm sorry. I understand it's a beautiful day. It's first Holy Communion. Holy Communion is the gift itself. You don't have to worry about anything else today. This is what we're giving our children. That's the great gift. Jesus himself And so people will disagree with what I've just said, but the reality is the only only way things are going to change is if we have those difficult conversations and really put our foot down when it comes to RECs who have all these grand ideas about the way a liturgy should be. I'm sorry, you're wrong. That's the reality, you're wrong. You do not get to abuse our liturgy. And our priests, my brother priests, this is my plea to you, stand up and let them know we're not going to do it this way. We're going to do it the way the church asks us to do it. And I can, and as a younger priest, (laughs) please do me the favour of just making it consistent because when people like myself go into other parishes and we do it by the book, we're looked at as, oh, you're ultra-Orthodox, you're right-wing, you're this, you're that, you're the other – No, I'm not. I'm just a faithful son of the church and I'm trying to do things the way the church has asked me to do it. And I'm sorry if you've had Father so-and-so for the last 18 years who has made the liturgy his own and has done things the way he wants to do it. Your community's gotten used to that. But I've seen communities that just go by the book and they're thriving too. So it's important that we safeguard the liturgy. We must. We must. And that takes humility. Yes. Because you don't think there are things that have crossed my mind. Oh, maybe this in this moment it might be a little bit better to do this. Of course I've had to battle those things. But that's not what the church asked me to do. Hashtag humility. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm so glad we're having this conversation because um, uh, honestly, like already, these things are just popping up in my mind and I'm like, oh, Okay. This is all making sense. And even things that I've sort of known to be true, but now I'm able to sort of articulate it in my own mind, though sometimes it doesn't come out the same way. But, um, you know, the, uh, when you said 
you've been called to be a faithful son of the church. And I, straight away I just thought, of, you know how people say now, um, I don't belong to a religion, I belong to Jesus or something like that. They'll say something along those lines. I belong to Jesus too. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, sounds great. Thank you. But, yeah. um, but no, like we're called to be a part of, of the church and that, and through that, we're able to be closer to Jesus, closer to God. Um, and, um, and it takes a seriously, like it takes serious humility to be able to say, okay, no, I don't know everything. I don't, I don't know, um, more than God. I don't know more than the wisdom that was passed on to the church through the magisterium and through early church fathers and things. Um, I don't know more than scripture. <laughs> um, and to just understand that like, Things are done the way they're done for a reason. And it's more than just human knowledge behind it. Like I can't just argue with you. Something in the church needs to change. Like like there are things, okay, that can be that can be changed. The the, the things we add as humans. Like, okay, mm-hmm. things can be done better and whatever. But I can't just come up to you, Father, and say, like, you know, I I, I don't like the words of the creed. You know, like, let's change that, you know, and then you go, okay, well, what part don't you like? Let's get this, let's get out, like, get this part out of it, or we'll change the words to this. It's not, it's not on you or me to do that. Like, and I think we fail to understand that so often. And then if you, if you're on the other side, Father, and if you say, no, we can't change the creed, then I go, well, like, you're just, you're just too traditional. Like, you don't. You know, you're not with the times. And so we blame you. Like, I'll, I'll go and blame you for not wanting to do it. But it's more than you. You're just, I don't know how to explain this. Like, it's, it's all so much in my head, but it's, it's like divine. It's not, yeah. you're arguing with humans about something that's being given to us by someone divine. I have the words of everlasting life. Jesus, yeah. his words, yeah? His words are timeless. His words are food for eternity. And that's what we have to get better at acknowledging, that Jesus gave us the structure of a church with Peter as the rock and whatever we as a church bind on earth is bound in heaven yeah, yeah. and whatever is loosed on earth is loosed in heaven. The gates of hell will not prevail against us, although people from within want to try and destroy it, but it will never be destroyed because Jesus' promise is good, it's solid. You can take that to the bank, it's not going to be undone. And the Venerable Fulton Sheen it says, if you wed yourself to the spirit of a particular age, you'll find yourself a widow in the next. And we have seen this because the people who have tried to change liturgy and abuse the, the documents of Vatican II from the late 60s all the way through to now who have been stuck in their own mindset for so long are doing everything they can to grasp onto every little last ounce of what they can and are they not opening their eyes to see that the churches are empty because of their way of thinking? They are wedding themselves to the spirit of an age when the church, specifically the mass, is ageless. There's a reason. Yes, through minor changes through the centuries, but there's a reason it is the way it is. And so we don't need a random sacramental coordinator, an REC or a principal getting up at these special masses. Every mass is special and giving commentary on what is happening to appease people who are visiting for the first time in their life or for people who only go once or twice a year. That's not what the Mass is. It's never been about that. That catechesis needs to happen outside of the Mass and for people who want it. And you've got to prove that you want it because God wants you. Even if you don't want God, God wants you. 
And so we need to do our best to humble ourselves and learn about what God wants to teach us. And what he taught us was something very specific by way of worship. Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. And in a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and he asked them to drink his blood. That's the Mass. The liturgy of the Word, the liturgy of the Eucharist. That's what it is. It's not to be changed. It's not to be adapted. It's just where this is an ongoing battle. Ongoing battle. And I think what it takes is humility from people who think they know the way it should be. It takes humility. And if they're not going to show that humility, then priests need to develop a bit of a backbone and say, I'm sorry, with this attitude, there's no way that the mustard seed can die and the kingdom of heaven can be spread. We see it time and time again. Younger people are coming back in droves to traditional Catholicism. Why? Because they're offered something that is objectively good, true and beautiful. And it's not catering to a particular age. It's not, oh, it's, it needs to be more modern so young people get it. It's not popular anymore. That was a thought that people are holding on to from 20, 30 years ago that is clearly shown it's not relevant anymore. So we need to really safeguard what we have and expose people to the objective beauty of what our liturgy is. And there will be people that want to get in the way of that and we have to love them and respect them. But we need to also respectfully let them know this isn't the way it's done. Father, was it really relevant back then though? Was it really that relevant? There was so much confusion back then that it was the perfect time to strike. And that's what they've held on to. Why, um, I know someone who's doing some consultancy work for the church at the moment. And quite strongly he's he's said to someone in leadership in the within the church saying um and they their their role is to oversee lots of people uh and he said the problem when you work in mission work or ministry work is everyone believes that they're, they're talking to god for what they want to do mm. and he's like but we have to be obedient and not all do what we want to do and he's always made it he's he made it very clear saying if, if people want to do what they want to do and they believe God's calling them to do this thing, then that's fine. Just march them right out the door and let them do it out there. But in here, we have to be obedient. And I don't understand why people don't understand that. If I come into your, Anthony, if I come into your home, I'm going to be respectful and obedient to whatever the culture is or the rituals or the rules of your home. We expect that when people come to our country, when they bring their passports in, they're going to adhere to our rules. But somehow, the most important thing, we don't want to be obedient. I, I sort of question whether those people are even Christian. Well, that's, that's a really big... Um, that reveals to us how people value their own autonomy um, sometimes it can be an arrogant viewpoint um, and there's lack of humility there that they just want to run their own show do what makes them feel comfortable and obedience does take a lot of humility it's to say that sometimes I'm going to do the things that I might not feel comfortable with or I know that this is the right thing to do because the church has the bigger picture in mind as opposed to me in my own little bubble it's, you know, the church says, no, we, we know what we're about. We're about the salvation of souls, first and foremost. We're not about this false view or narrative of hospitality where, yeah, yeah, God wants everyone. God wants you to come in. God desires that every soul is saved. He desires it. We're the ones that make the decision to go against God. We're the ones that make the decision to say, no, I know better. And so that is, that's a big slap in the face to God who knows us better than we know ourselves. 
And Jesus speaks about that quite a bit. Jesus always speaks to the heart. He knows who we are. He knows what we're about. He knows our struggles. He knows our weaknesses. And it really, yeah, it's, it's just people trying to compensate for their own inadequacies. Yeah. They're trying to compensate for, their, for what they feel as though this is the big gap in the church or the big hole. They think that the church isn't perfect. No, Jesus sanctifies us through his death and resurrection. His bridegroom, uh, his bride, sorry, he's the bridegroom. His bride is perfect. The church is perfect. The people in it are sinful. And so we need to continue to better ourselves, grow in holiness, deny ourselves. Jesus says it, if anyone wants to be a follower of mine, they must pick up their cross, deny themselves and follow me. Not a, lot, not a lot of denial, you know, and that's what we're talking about with pride, okay? We're not just talking about this random movement that pops their head up once a year. All of us have an ability to be proud and to say, God, I know better. And some people in the church behave that way and they say, I know better. And in those types of people, there will never be any growth and what's sad is they'll go through life thinking, I'm a good Catholic, I'm doing what I, you know, I, I volunteer here, I do all of that. Not necessarily the case. Not necessarily the case. We must be adherents to what Jesus says. He's very clear on what he says. And we have a responsibility to promulgate that instruction. We've been given that responsibility by Christ himself, is to go out and spread the gospel and baptize all nations. And Jesus says it himself, I came not to bring peace but the sword. Father will go against son. Two in a family of five, three will be opposed to two, two will be opposed to three. Mother against daughter, you know, son against mother-in-law. This division is going to be apparent if you choose to authentically follow Christ. And we see that division in the church by those who do want to follow Christ and those who don't. They want to follow themselves, but they want to lean on the church and her resources to say this is the way the church will be better. It's not the way to do it. Or they, they would use the church as their platform to achieve what they want to. And I say this very carefully and with... With, I mean, I'm 40, so there is a, there's a tight little hint of experience in that 40. Um, but it is not often obvious when you're going against God, even within yourself or even someone witnessing someone doing what they believe is the work of God. When there's that little voice inside that you says, this is my chance to make a difference, you're suddenly being sent by yourself, not by God. Correct. And... It's, I, I've, I'm very fearful of our youth falling into those traps or su su succumbing to someone who's that yep. because it is not obvious. It takes years of experience. It takes wisdom. It takes amazing judge of character. It takes good, solid foundations. But, you know, I, my, my job is to, uh, like I've heard people say, I want to leave a legacy. I hope that everything I, me, me Anthony personally, I hope that everything I do of of God or through God is remembered and, and everything else is completely 100% forgotten about. And I have to always constant. and that's that discernment. I'm a big advocate for discernment, surprise, surprise, <laughs> um, of knowing what is of me and what is of God. It's funny you say that. Why do you think for our young people in a, in a lot of our Sydney Catholic schools, why do you think the massive emphasis is always put on social justice? Well, I can tell you what I think, but... Yeah, I'm, I'm, I ask that for us to think about because social justice oftentimes makes us feel good about ourselves. Mm. What is my legacy going to be? How have I helped others? Very important. God wants us to help others. But if, all you, uh, if you're churned out of our schooling systems with a social justice mindset, you are more than likely going to become one of those great protesters in university. 
you're probably going to be the person that's chanting intifada. You're probably going to be the person that's chanting from the river to the sea because all you ever got in your schooling system was social justice. If you don't have the fullness, the wholeness of faith, if you don't have discernment, if you're not a person of prayer, then it's always going to be about you. Mm. And that's why this is, and, th- and this extends into what you experienced over the weekend. Mm. We have to be people that welcome. We have to be people that explain everything. Because if we don't, we're going to be seen as a cold church. We weren't welcoming. We can't have that as their first experience of going to Mass. All these social justice tentacles just flow out. We we, do, we've spoken about that We before. might do a show on social justice just to show people the church's genuine teaching on social justice. Mm. We might do that. Well, we've That'd spoken cool. about this before, probably overseas. I think we've had a chat about this where I've said um, the, the issue I've seen in, in the work I do is that there is a lot of emphasis on what they would call fiat, faith in action teams. And this is not specific to a diocese or an organization. They all, like they're all doing it. That's, that's great. Faith in action is amazing. But before the action, there must be the formation, faith formation. Mm. And that isn't really happening in a lot of places. Yeah. There's, um, just off of that, there's uh, a writing by St. John of, St. John of the Cross, maybe? Mm. Who, um, and, and I'll I'll butcher the actual quote, but um, but it's along the lines of, and I remember at a leadership retreat that I, the Saint Felix leaders were at with Father Ronnie. Um, he, you know, after everything we'd planned for the year, he read this out to us, and it was awesome. It was such a good reminder. Um, it was something along the lines of uh, actions, even if for the church without without an interior life can produce very little fruit sometimes no fruit and at times even pure evil yep and i was like oh, okay that's a big wake up cuz you're right without the formation but more so without an interior life without a prayer life um, which was a lot of the struggle as a leader I was going through because at times it, you can get so caught up with trying to just get people in, mm-hmm. trying to get numbers. And that's, um, I was sort of bouncing, sorry, but I was having a chat with um, Brendan, shout out Brendan, if you're listening, um, about our teens group. And we were saying the fruit of our teens group, the dividends is not how many teens are coming each each week we do it. But it's, you know, it's this person, this one person in in teens just had their first, you know, real confession experience. Or um, this person is now actually thinking about, does God love me? And he's getting somewhere with it. Actually, he does. He wants me to be happy. He wants this. Like, they're the fruits. And so, and while I say that, the Catholic Church is the most inclusive organization in the world. <laughs> so we always say, oh, we need to be more inclusive. We need to- No, no. The Catholic Church is the most inclusive. They welcome everyone. By its definition. Yeah, universal. Yes, universal. According to the whole, everyone's welcome. Okay, Just because not everyone's ideas or everyone's um, actions necessarily, just because they, uh, they aren't welcome to be blatant, like to be blunt, Everyone is welcome. And so um, it's not that we're being exclusive, but, uh, and and like, sorry, just to bring it back, it's not, you know, getting all these different people in because now we have better music and um, the priest walks around with the microphone and asks everyone questions and gets everyone to scream during his homily in the middle of mass, which also happened on Sunday, which is extremely frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's not, that's not, they're not the fruits that the church looks for. Yep. The, the fruits are the salvation of souls. And how humble is the church in that even if you are a person that has that really funny idea that probably 
won't ever be welcomed or if you are a person who lives a particular lifestyle where that lifestyle will never be welcomed, the church still welcomes you. Amen. That's what wow. the church does. Yeah. And so, yeah, your wacky idea will not be welcome in the church because it is not of God. It is not of Christ. It's not what he left us. Or the way that you live your life is not welcome, but you are welcome. And what does that require? That requires an act of humility to turn away from that idea and say, you know what, that wasn't right. Or the way I'm living, it's not right. Well, the world might be accepting of the way that I'm living, but the church says, I'm still welcome, but I need to think about the way I'm living. And it gives me an opportunity to repent. It gives me an opportunity to say, I'm sorry for my sins, or I'm sorry for being disobedient. So yeah, the church welcomes everyone. It may not welcome your ideas completely because they're devoid of truth or scripture or the way the church has set something down. But all of that is an act of humility anyway. We've all had our own struggles with what the church has taught. But we've come into a realization that what the church teaches is from God. And so we safeguard that and we encourage people each and every day to turn away from your sin to repent of your ways, to say sorry to God, and to come into communion with God. And that's all God desires. Yeah. And what gets in the way? Pride. Yeah. Pride gets in the way. Hashtag humility. And to reiterate that challenge <laughs> is to change profile pictures, screensavers, any photos that you identify with on your phone or <laughs> yeah, on technology exactly to the sacred heart or immaculate sacred heart of Jesus or immaculate heart of Mary. That's right. And also post up on your stories, a photo of the sacred heart of Jesus and or the immaculate heart of Mary hashtag humility and tag against the grain as well. That's it. Let's get it going. That's it. God bless you all. Great conversation. Thanks so much for this. This was awesome. Thank this you. is one of those last parts of the episode where you're probably going to have to watch this segment over and over and over again and think about it and pray about it most especially. Okay? We are very, very passionate about living for the Lord and being faithful sons of the church. And we know we're not always interpreted that way. Yeah. And so it's important that you know we're doing our best here. We're not always going to use the right words. But it's so important that we do our best to humble ourselves and to try and be as faithful as we can to what God teaches. And we, we like to think we're doing a pretty good job of that, um, hopefully. And, you know, <laughs> God will be our judge on the day we breathe our last breath. He'll be our judge and he'll let us know if we did the right thing or not. But we do it in all faith. We do it in humility. And we hope we've been able to challenge a few people out there in this episode, that maybe it's not always about me. If God is at the center of my life, it'll never be about me. And that's where I'll be my most happiest. Yeah, maybe. Because it'll be about loving God first and my neighbor. And then I'll come in. God looks at me in my lowliness. Just like he looked at Mary in her lowliness. So with that, let's finish with prayer. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, you look on the soul that is humble and contrite. We ask that you increase in us humility, that we might look on our own lowliness and give you permission to work with that lowliness so that we might be able to magnify you in our own lives, amongst our family and friends, and around the world. And we give you thanks, Almighty God, for all the great things that you do for us. Keep us docile to your promptings. And may we continue to be faithful sons and daughters of the church. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, You are the salt of the earth. What good is salt if it loses its taste? So stay salty. And don't be afraid to go against the grain. God bless.